Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, we're going to give away the Miguron Acuri that we uh, talked about last week, uh, three new knives from Tommaso Rumici, and then we get to daggers. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment uh, this past week was from uh, my good buddy JVF from across the pond. He's uh, He was commenting on a, sh a knife we were talking about in Life Knife News, and he says, This new CJRB cord, like all other multi-fast deployment methods, makes me think of people wearing a belt and suspenders at the same time. I hope they'll choose between thumb studs and flippers, as both seem to be too much for me. I consider the button as a fast deployment, too, with gravity or a simple wrist move. So this one is wearing two belts and suspenders. And uh, that just cracked me up uh, coming from a, a gentleman uh, over in a very, very fashion conscious nation in Europe. It made me think, man, that's that's pretty funny. Two belts and suspenders. But I've heard that um, metaphor used before. And it, it also speaks to the fact that there are so many knives with uh, three or more ways of opening. For instance, the um, Bellamy by uh, Vostid Knives that we gave away Thursday Night Knives a little while back. Uh, that was one of the things that really got me about that knife was the fuller, the flipper, the front flipper. And then, of course, you can just open it the old fashioned way, which is pretty old fashioned. Uh, but do we need all these methods of deployment? That is the question. And it is a burning, burning question. But uh, I thought JVF stated it perfectly. Probably not. But those features are fun. And if we are fidgeters, which many of us are, um, well, it gives you options in the fidget. So great comment. Thank you, JVF. And thank you one and all for commenting uh, this past week. I love reading them all. And uh, I appreciate the conversation. All that being said, I think it's time for a pocket check. Today, I was carrying on my person a design from the great and powerful Dirk Pinkerton. I love this knife. This is the asymmetrical contact. This is the mid. This is from the mid-tier line of knives from uh, Beyond EDC. This is one of his sort of uh, emblematically styled Warncliffs. Uh, we know Dirk Pinkerton loves the Warncliffe and does a beautiful job designing them. Uh, this one is a uh, titanium frame lock and really i think that the the angle of attack of that cutting edge is perfect for a warncliffe ordinarily we'll see it uh, a downward cant to the uh, to that edge and in this case it actually trends upward towards the point now the point is center line uh, which i do appreciate um, but i like that upward sweep for a number of reasons. Uh, first of all, in a utility cut, if we're here, I'm going to have this over here in this camera. If we're going to use the knife in this sort of dragging tip motion, um, that angle works great for putting the tip where it needs to be. But if we're going to flex into, you know, a self-defense Picol style with the tip down edge in, uh, it, it does make this a great angle for that defensive uh, motion. I know people are probably rolling their eyes at that, but in talking with Dirk Pinkerton, that was a, a consideration going into this. He wanted this knife to be multi-use, um, not just utility uh, EDC, which is what we're going to use it for 100% of the time. But in that 1%, uh, you know, life is sometimes 101 or 110%. In that extra percentage, you might need to pull this out and use it uh, in a tactical way or in a self-defense kind of way, and that covers that. Um, all that being said, you might not actually ever use a knife that way. Most of us will not. 
but it is an aesthetic also. You know, some of us just like weapony knives. So this knife to me covers those bases. It is a great EDC design, but if you needed it that way, it would work. Uh, it would work really well uh, for more than EDC plus, we'll call it. Uh, next up on uh, in my front left pocket for most of the day was the Jack Wolf Knives Javelina Jack. I uh, just love this sow belly um, knife with the um, with the long California clip there, sometimes called a Turkish clip. Uh, that is S90V, S90V blade steel, and uh, a real, real sharp and slicey blade. Uh, being um, full height, hollow ground, uh, as most of the Jack Wolf knives are. There, as a matter of fact, there's only one Jack Wolf knife that isn't uh, fully hollow ground, and that's the uh, Benny's, uh, the Benny's clip, uh, which is a more traditionally styled um, knife in that it's got a flat there. And when I say traditionally styled, I mean uh, more in keeping with the original Tony Bowes design, uh, which is a partial grind. It's not a fully uh, full height grind. Anyway, uh, that's long for saying I love this knife, and uh, these are going the way of the dodo in terms of the micarta. Uh, the Jack Wolf Knives will be back for a whole nother run of these knives. Uh, different blade on that. He will not be, he meaning Ben Belkin, will not be running with micarta anymore. He'll be using the carbon fiber. That is what people are snapping up, buying up. That is the coveted handle material for these knives. Uh, so I'm happy that I have this micarta. I have another one coming uh, that is probably one of the last Jack Wolf knives in micarta. So I'm very happy about that. Uh, this knife was only used to cut a cigar, and that was actually last night. So um, popped this back in my pocket today. Didn't use it at all. Uh, but man, these things make great cigar cutters. I have this technique down. I guess I'm too cheap to buy a cigar cutter. I'm, I'm like, if I'm going to buy a blade, it's going to be in a knife. Uh, I should just, you know, get a new cigar cutter. But this works really well if I kind of roll the cigar. And these things are so thin and sharp. Uh, I just don't like it when um, the wrapper starts to unwrap because the cut isn't clean. So I've learned how to kind of do that with these Jack Wolf knives. Okay, next up. I've been carrying this scout style on the front. This is the um, TKL Knives Guardian in um, uh, 80 CRV2. I've been saying 51, 52, 100, and that is wrong. This is 80, C, 80 CRV2, and uh, it's got the nickel boron coating, so it's super slick when it's slipping into whatever material you're slipping it into. And uh, much like the coating they use on pistols, different gun parts and such, um, that is what, what we have here. Uh, it's got that real broad 30 degree on both sides uh, bevel to make big holes. And man, it is still really sharp. It's not a slicey knife. This is You're not going to be cutting the cheese with this knife, uh, but it is very much a hole maker and gasher. And uh, that's part of the charm of this knife. Um, there's a no there are a number of TKL knives that have that sort of uh, grind. His nightshade version, which are smaller self-defense knives, have that real stout 60 degree inclusive uh, bevel. And um, I've really grown to like carrying scout style on the front. I've had a number of people recently kind of uh, hit me to that. I mean, I've known about it, but now that we are in the springtime and uh, I've been called an old fogey because I tuck in my my shirts, uh, you know, for work. But I, you know, kind of look like a mama Luke if you don't with certain kind of clothes. And that means uh, not so much with the scout style. But now that um, spring is here and I'm wearing more and more shirts that that you can kind of leave untucked and. Uh, I've been doing it more and I like it. I'm, I'm liking a slim profile knife boop, right up front because it is true. That's where your hands always are. They're right up front. Uh, but for the larger blades, I'm still a three o'clock in the waistband kind of guy. And uh, one of the knives we're, we'll be seeing in um, the state of the collection is a large fixed blade. And I wore carried it successfully in the waistband uh, all day 
this past weekend. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Uh, but that has a lot to do with the profile of the sheath. All right. Next and last for emotional support, I had the CJRB Pyrite. This thing is a great fidgeter. Uh, that button lock is excellent and um, the action is excellent and it really stays locked open. I mean, I've I've been skeptical of the button locks because I just had one not too long ago uh, kind of give up the ghost on me, but everything else has been, all the other ones I have have been perfect. And that was a Vostid Raccoon, I will tell you. Uh, but a lot of other people have had issues with that one. And it was only after spine whacking it uh, several different times uh, that I got it. So I, I, it's kind of an unfair test, I got to say, especially with certain kind of locks. But this one has been excellent. And I really like flipping this one. It's a very fun little knife to fidget with. And uh, not for nothing, it is a great slicer with that full height uh, flat ground AR RPM nine blade steel. So this is what I had on me today. I had the asymmetrical contact designed by Dirk Pinkerton. I had the uh, Ben Belkin designed Havelina Jack, uh, the TKL knives uh, Guardian, and the CJRB Pyrite. So what did you have on you today? Let me know in the comments below. I always love finding out what other people carry. The fine, classy crew that shows up to this show every week. Uh, you give me a lot of ideas for knives to carry. And uh, I guess I don't really need uh, too many ideas because I can't, just can't stop getting knives. So anyway, keep them coming. Some ex exciting news on the um, Nova One front. The pre-order ended last Friday and construction has begun. Well, actually, construction had already begun on the first six, 16 of these. Um, and the final nine of them will begin uh, very shortly. So these are underway. And I don't want to speak for Matt Chase, but I don't think it's going to take him until August to make these. Um, now, I guess I am speaking for him, but hopefully it doesn't take till August. But that's been the going uh, sort of deadline. That's what I've been promising people. Um, so very much looking forward to this. I, um, You know how I feel about this knife. I've been carrying it day in, day out, day in, day out. Only recently has the TKL Knives um, uh, Guardian been slipping into my EDC uh, in terms of fixed blade. I, I guess I felt like until the pre-order was done, this had to be my my premium primary fixed blade uh, for daily carry. And it is awesome. And I really must say, I, I don't like it when people call their own work awesome, but this isn't my own work. I just drew out a Bowie blade I wanted to see on Matt Chase's uh, EDC Tonto platform. And he he made this and it is beautiful. He makes awesome, awesome knives. So I'm very, very excited to get these in the hands of the uh, people who ordered them. And for those of you who didn't order them and um, want a collaboration knife with uh, myself and Matt Chase, there will be a Nova 2. And I have not, uh, I have not uh, finished designing the blade, but I know the neighborhood I will be in with that blade. So I'm very, very excited about that. All right, next up in some housekeeping here. Uh, last week, I announced the giveaway of the Miguron Acri. The Miguron Acri, which uh, just in my fidgeting here has really smoothed up. Uh, this was a little bit of a stiff front flipper initially, but my Lord. Uh, now, again, like, like usual, I can't do that. Uh, but like usual, I don't want to give it away now. Uh, but it's underway. It has to, it has to be done because I've already promised. <laughs> so those of you who commented uh, about wanting this knife from last week's midweek supplemental, here's your chance. And uh, let's, let's find out, Jim, let's find out who wins this knife. All right. He's going to click in three, two, one. Aha. Oh, we're having a, there we go. Bradley Swaim, who said, whose comment was, Bob is the Joe Rogan of the knife community, bringing us all together. Love the content, never give up. Wow. 
Okay, so that is one hell of a compliment. I love Joe Rogan. Who doesn't? Great guy and uh, great martial artist, great host, great comedian. He's a, a jack of all trades. My gosh, what a nice compliment. And just for that, Bradley, no, not for that. You randomly have won the Miguron Acri. Thank you so much, man. I really, really appreciate the comment. And um, I appreciate your um, being a part of this. So please send your address. You can send it to my uh, my email. You can find that easily. Just go to the website. I, I greatly appreciate it. That will be off to you, the Miguron Acri. All right, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at some knife life news and then uh, state of the collection. So hang on, you're going to want to see this. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife. And we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at theknifejunkie.com slash knives. That's theknifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. I have to avert my eyes from that ad every week. It's a new bunch of sales knives from knives ship free or new releases. And, uh, it gives me all sorts of bad ideas. So, uh, uh anyway, uh, so first up from, uh, in life knife news, a Tommaso Rumici and Viper knives an Italian, um, manufacturer are, have just announced a three knife EDC, um, fixed blade collection called the basic. And, uh, there's basic one, basic two and basic three. Basic one is that drop point. Basic two is that sheep's foot. And the one on the bottom, the basic three, is a spear point with a little bit extra on the pommel. And that is intended for uh, more emergency use. Pretty interesting uh, small package uh, for a fixed blade knife. I guess I guess if uh, pushed, I would go for the sheep's foot. I really like the look of that sheep's foot, even though the point is not so pointy. I don't, I'm not that rigid in my taste. I guess I would probably go with that one. Interesting thing about this basic line is that you can get it in either D2 steel with micarta handles, <coughs> pardon me, or Magna Cut. You can get it in Magna Cut. Hopefully they do the heat treat properly or they will hear about it. Um, Magna Cut comes in either uh, micarta or you can get it in that nice marbled carbon fiber that you see on the top. Uh, basic. Uh, the basic line comes in a Kydex sheath, uh, which is a good choice for EDC, I would say. Though, I got to say, they would look nice, uh, especially with that marbled carbon fiber uh, in a little leather drop sheath. But um, if we're going to EDC it, chances are Kydex is the best option. All right, next up, from Wee Knives. Man, they just keep pumping them out, don't they? Uh, from Wee Knives, they have one called the Exiton. I'm assuming that's how it's pronounced, the Exiton. Uh, what I like about this is what I've liked about a number of their recent releases. Uh, they've done a number of um, limited releases recently, and they're all coming with larger than 3.5-inch blades. And uh, this is another one of them. Uh, to me, too many notes on that handle. You've got uh, the the holes, you've got the anodized grooves, you've got the differently colored, um, uh, what do you call it, pivot. Um, but what I do like is that blade. That is a compound ground drop point. Now look closely at uh, the, the front of that blade and you'll see another little gr uh, grind. It's very subtle, but it's sort of like a sponto. <clears throat> pardon me it's sort of like a sponto rick hinderer tm and uh so it's it's a little bit hollow ground behind it and a little bit flat ground in front of it and there's very little bit of uh, there's a very small delineating line there but it is a compound ground drop point which is kind of a, a cool thing that's a 3.68 inch 20 cv blade you got flipper on bearings ceramic bearings that is and it's a button lock so uh, again, we see the hole opening, we see the flipper opening, and then we see the button lock. So there's a there's three there's your belt and suspenders there. Three different ways you can open it. 
And uh, like the model that came before it called the Cubis, um, that looks a lot like the Watuaga uh, from Sencut. Uh, this one is a uh, has an integral backspacer, meaning it's a one-piece backspacer that spans the back of the handle in either uh, titanium or in carbon fiber. 3.7 ounces and only 200 of these made. So if this is a knife of interest to you, you better get on it uh, before they are all swept away. All right, next up, speaking of knives ship free, they have come out with something pretty outrageous from their uh, research and development team. Now they are known for really pushing the envelope when it comes to their uh, collaboration knives. And uh, Knives Ship Free, we know that they are one of the best retailers out there, but every once in a while, like every April or so, they will come out with their own new knife. And this one, man, this takes the cake. I, I have to jump on this one. This one leverages their new surround serration technology. Uh, the owner of the company was bemoaning the fact that uh, his serrated knives only offer about three and a half inches of serrations at the very most. So he took these serrations and he's gone up the spine of the blade, even onto the handle on both sides so that your knife will never, ever go dull. Uh, so yeah, no longer traditionally hemmed in by the definition of what is and what isn't a blade. Surround serration takes it all the way around, including on the clip. So very excited about this. Uh, you never have to worry about your knife going dull. And of course, this came out on April 1st. Last very, very interesting. And for those of you uh, who aren't paying attention, but kind of hear me muttering in the background, your pizza roll on your belly and you said, what? Serrations all the way around. Of course, this was their April Fool's joke this year. They always do awesome April Fool's jokes. And uh, um, just as a side note, I noticed a lot of well, a lot of knife companies do their April Fool's jokes. And the one that uh, Emerson did this year, a double ended upswept knife, uh, they called it the, the you know, so it's two blades coming out of one handle actually looked really cool. But to them, it was a joke. So that's unfortunate. It'd be kind of cool to see theirs uh, come to life. Uh, of course, uh, this knife ship free lacerator Mark V would do just that and you would not be able to hold on to it. All right. Lastly, a very exciting story for me. You know what this knife is. This is the knife I purchased when the uh, ban on switchblades in Virginia, my state here, uh, was repealed last July 1st. Well, this July 1st, what goes into effect is something that was just signed. Glenn Youngkin, our governor, uh, who brought a little bit of sanity back to this state, uh, signed uh, House Bill 2298, which repeals the switchblade concealment carry ban. So um, now we will be able to carry these things concealed, uh, which is funny, kind of interesting to me, because that means beforehand we weren't allowed to. Uh, so you had to be showing some clip you had to be showing some knife to have it not be legal. If you just dropped it in your pocket for comfort or whatever, that was suddenly illegal. Um, so I I'm really excited about this, as you can tell. And uh, maybe it gives me a, a reason to go out and buy another one. But uh, I, I just want to read this. Uh, Jim, if you could hold that there. This is essentially, uh, uh, he says, as noted previously, the bill was attended I'm sorry, amended to add stiletto to the list of items that cannot be carried concealed. This is essentially superfluous because prior court decisions in Virginia have held that stiletto and dagger are of like kind to Dirk, which has long been pro prohibited in concealed carry. So what this what this means is that back in the 80s, I remember out the fronts being called stilettos for some uh unknown reason to me. That is obviously not a stiletto. That is a recurve, beautiful recurve blade on this Heretic Manticore X. So I think that was just getting lumped in as usual by legislators who know nothing about knives. And, as, you know, they heard from their son once that this is called a stiletto. And then so it got put into law. So very excited to see that going away. Um, I've, I'm glad to see a little bit of sanity coming back to this insane world. That's it for my uh, editorializing, at least on politics. I will editorialize a lot on knives coming up with the State of the Collection.
Don't take dull for an answer. It's the Knife Junkie's favorite sign-off phrase, and now you can get that tagline on a variety of merchandise, like a t-shirt, sweatshirt, hoodie, long-sleeve tee, and more, even on coasters, tote bags, a coffee mug, water bottle, and stickers. Let everyone know that you're a knife junkie and that you don't take dull for an answer. Get yours at thenifejunkie.com slash dull and shop for all of your Knife Junkie's merchandise at thenifejunkie.com slash shop. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. I just got a knife last week. It was an impulse buy on an Amazon order. I was being responsible, getting getting things the family needed for the house, etc. Chief among them, a shower curtain rod. Uh, anyway, you don't need to hear any of that. But uh, I did drop this on my uh, in my cart. I've already used it a lot, and there's gunk on the blade. Sorry about that. But this is the Kubi Royal. Uh, I'm going to call it the Royale. It's the Kubi Royal. This is designed by uh, Colin Maison Pierre and CM Designs. And uh, I've been looking at this knife for a long time. Um, I love his designs. Of course, he's with uh, he's with Devo Knives with Lefty EDC, uh, Kev, Kevin making uh, making those fancy high end knives. But he also has a his business CM Designs, and he designed recently the Tonic, which he's going to loan me to check out <clears throat> his innovative backlock, um, and uh, which I believe is made by. Who makes that? Suddenly I'm having a mind lock. You know, if you watch Thursday Night Knives, that happens plenty. Uh, but I've been loving this one uh, a lot. And <clears throat> I've been looking at it on Amazon forever. And it was only 35 bucks, 36 bucks, something like that. So I finally pulled the trigger on it and I've uh, been digging it a lot. It, this is a great emotional support knife. You got a front flipper and you've got a great long uh opening hole there that you can use in a variety of ways. Um, I recently, you know, this past week, uh, got in touch with Colin and just told him how much I like this knife and and uh, that I've been driving people at work crazy with it because I've been flipping it a lot. And he, he got a chuckle out of that. He said, that's one of my first designs. I'm glad you like it. And as a um, art, art type artist, uh, I know that I frequently look at my older work and just think, Ooh, geez, you know, I've moved way, I've moved on from that, you know, ages ago, but it's great to see when people still like the stuff that you've moved on from. And, uh, I think that's a, that was a big, uh, factor with him. This is D2 blade steel, great drop point, And actually really, a, a nice stabby drop point. It looks like, uh, Looks like it veers towards the sheep's foot, but it is a, an excellent piercing blade. Very, very sharp. I love the JG10. Of course, it comes in other color combinations, but to me, uh, this is this is most beautiful. And Kubi, Kubi knives, man, they are good at what they do. So uh, very happy with this knife and really happy to have a CM Designs knife in my collection. Next up, you're going to see this featured... Uh, in the main in the main uh dagger section <sighs> but i got the less george designed raider dagger uh from spartan knives first of all uh, spartan blades great sheath this is the one that i carried this past weekend in the waistband uh probably not smart in terms of legality uh but i was i was in a in one location the whole time and semi permissive <laughs> so if they ever you know they Whatever, I'm just going to drop that portion. Uh, but a very, very nice dagger. This is made in Taiwan. The fit and finish is outstanding. It is wickedly sharp and incredibly, well, pointy, as you can see. And uh, it is a full tang knife, true full tang knife. And we can see uh, there is jimping all the way around on the handle. So you have awesome gription here. It's not sharp or uncomfortable or annoying or anything like that. Now, this is based on the Marine Raider Stiletto. The Marine Raider Stiletto, just a little quick history. This was what replaced the 1918, uh, this uh, knuckle duster uh, dagger here, uh, which was too heavy, uh, difficult to produce, and uh, unwieldy in a, in a way, unless you were 
using it in that in that hammer fist grip. Uh, so they that's a was a big st strategic material going into that cast handle. So um, for many reasons, they dropped the knuckle duster dagger and um, designed this. Um, this was taken from this was designed by a, a an active Marine. I think he was a colonel and now his name slips my mind, but based very, very uh, heavily on the Fairbairn Sykes uh, that was being used up in Scotland at a place he was training his Marines. And they. Uh, created the knife out of aluminum it, instead of uh, drop forging them like the Fairbairn Sykes were. So they did not end up being very durable and were really only using, only well suited to silently killing people. So, I mean, this was not a very flexible knife. So it did not stay in service for very long before it was replaced with the, what, the M3 and the, and the um, K-Bar fighting utility knife which was a way more robust design and a way more um versatile design being a slenderized a slender bowie uh but this uh is a, probably the greatest version of this uh knife in that it is durably made and uh created by uh designed by les george and spartan blades and um uh, you know, it, this is a quite a nicely produced knife. Look at that Coke bottle handle. And uh, that handle is FRN, really nice FRN. I know that sounds like a contradiction in terms, but um, when I called this a true full tang, that even uh, goes up into the quillions. Those quillions are steel. The whole thing is steel. If you took off those handles, you would have that exact profile. Um, I'm very excited about this knife. You've heard me talk about it ever since it was announced. And a great thing about this and the two new Bill Harzi uh, Spartan designs, one of them is called a fighter. It's like a clip point, looks a, sort of like his version of a K-Bar. And the other is a tactical Nesmuk. Yes, very cool. Um, and this, those three knives, uh, is that they are inexpensive, uh, relatively speaking, for for Spartan blades. 150 bucks, now that's not nothing. And, uh, you know, um, I... But compared to 400 bucks for the Spartan Harzi dagger, um, it is a great alternative and beautiful. And it has a very interesting lineage with uh, the Marine uh, Raider dagger. Now, you know, Les George, uh, the guy who designed this, is a former Marine. Uh, he did EOD um, and he loves daggers. And that is probably, you know, besides his um, VSEP and his uh, folders, that is definitely what he is known for is his dagger love and his uh, production of daggers. So I'm very happy to have this in the collection. Uh, lastly, what I'm really happy, one I'm really happy to have in the collection is a new pairing knife from Steve Kalari custom knives. You may know him as super steel Steve, uh, but he's been on the show. He, he doesn't really go by that anymore. He goes by his name, Steve Kalari, hot headed Italian. I love the man. He's awesome. Um, but what I love even more are his knives. Uh, this is the second uh, I have this chef's knife that he made, um, that beautiful patina on it. Uh, but I've been wanting to check out the pairing knife ever since we talked about it on the podcast because um, he is a chef by training and he has always been um, less than impressed with uh, pairing knife designs out there because they usually have very thin handles and make the actual act of pairing very difficult. Pairing, you know, you're kind of peeling and and uh, holding the knife with the edge in and doing a lot of work this way. So he made the the handle profile larger and then the thickness larger. Um, oh, I know, I know you're looking, you are drooling at this antique micarta. It is so beautiful, I know. Look at that. So this is an antique micarta, and and then it's got um, brown liners and a Tiffany, Tiffany blue. You know that Tiffany, um, the jewelry store, is known for their blue, that sort of celeste blue. Just a gorgeous color combination, really well done. But the thing that's so great about these knives 
are how very thin he gets them. They're, they start with very thin stock, 16th of an inch, I believe, and then fully flat ground to just a laser point. And when they get dull, like this one has, not dull, but, you know, well used, um, they still cut because they're so thin. The geometry is so thin, they still cut even without a, you know, shaving edge or what have you. And the patina on this is just a thing of beauty, no doubt. I love that. So uh, now I have two Steve Kalari custom knives in the kitchen. This one I'm very excited for my my uh, daughters to use, especially my younger daughter, who now she just loves eating cucumbers. She's always loved them, but now I allow her to prep them for dinner. And so she's like, she's she's really getting her cucumbers in because she loves cutting them. And with this, she hasn't used this yet. With this, it will be a phenomenal uh activity for her. So very, very, very happy to have this Steve Kalari custom uh, paring knife in the collection. Uh, I do, well, in the kitchen, really, but I do highly recommend you check out Steve Kalari custom knives because uh, for now, they're relatively inexpensive for handmade custom uh, knives. I just ordered another one for a buddy of mine who's turning uh, 50 next week. So um, I know he's working on that one now. Uh, it's great to get in on the ground floor of promising careers of new knife makers, and he is definitely one of them. Okay, I want to wrap up this show with a talk about daggers. Now, last Thursday night for Thursday Night Knives, we talked about favorite knives from history, and I just was waxing poetic about daggers because of my new Spartan dagger. And... Um, Last week's show, right here, when we went over my Cold Steel Fixed Blade collection, I was remiss in neglecting one knife that I forgot to put up, and that was this, the Cold Steel Tie Pan. This dagger is incredible. Seven-inch uh, hollow ground, quad hollow ground um, dagger with, a, with two sweeping uh, bellied edges and that awesome... Tonto style handle that we've come to know and love from the from the uh, cold steel Tonto. Let me see if I can get this camera, which is acting up today, in focus. There, oh no! All right. Well, I'm going to hold this in front of the main camera just so you can gaze upon the beauty of this thing. But um, yeah, so this this was a dagger that I have wanted since it was announced 30 years ago or so. Uh, hot on the heels of the of the cold steel tanto with that with that setup the guard and the um and the pommel the pointy pommel and that incredible incredible dagger uh blade something i really like about this blade is that with the sweep with the uh belly on this it's a great slasher and cutter as well as point driven uh you know stabber so that is what we go to daggers for, right? We go to daggers for the thrusting ability. But if you can add a great bellied edge to it, man, that's that's a value added, as they like to say in the business world. Because, um, because your instinct, a lot of people's instinct is to slash, you know, as well as thrust. So you want to make sure you have good slashing capability with it. Also comes in a great secure X sheath. I've added my own uh, in the waistband clip here. Uh, not a concealed, uh, not a discreet carry clip, but it'll do until one of those gets here. Next up, a very famous dagger uh, because of its design lineage. This was uh, designed by A.G. Russell, the late great A.G. Russell. It is the Sting model. And this is a one-piece drop forged dagger here it comes in a great uh, nylon covered uh lock lock in place uh plastic sheath really really a nice nice blade you've got this uh thumb scoop it's set up to hold kind of in that shovel position uh, if that's the right expression and uh let me see if that helps and it is very sharp but also pretty stout uh, being a one-piece construction like this. Uh, this was our bathroom knife for a while, but being um, made out of uh, 1090 steel, or 10, I'm sorry, 
1050 high carbon steel. It uh, it was beginning to rust a little bit on the edge, so stropped it out and uh, swapped it out with a different knife. Uh, one of the many in the bathroom, master bathroom. But uh, I included the lanyard on this one because I, though it is sculpted to fit the hand really well, I always kind of felt like if I actually needed to thrust with this, I would want that on there because if I hit something hard, uh, it would be more difficult without quillions to maintain grip. So especially if your hands are wet or anything like that. So got the lanyard on there just in case. Uh, but a great, great little dagger is this uh, CRKT Sting. This was a gift from my brother-in-law. Gotten a lot of cool knives from my brother and my brother-in-law. I talk about them both a lot. All right, next up, uh, the one folder in this whole um, in this whole collection of daggers because folding daggers are hard to come by and I don't consider a dagger shape without a, a second edge a folding dagger I just don't but this one is one of the few uh, I know we have the arch nemesis by sharp by design we have the uh, what is it the maximus by hinderer knives and then the antimatter here by arcane design just an absolute beautiful folding dagger that's those are two sharp edges and this is produced by riot knives designed by uh arcane designs and uh israel bacchus of arcane design and just beautiful you've got you've got the classic sort of cruciform shape uh of of a dagger with the all of its um symmetricalness symmetry and but you've got a real modern touch to it um, with that shape and with the Tesla coil on the clip. Let's see. Can we see the Tesla coil on the clip? There we go. Yeah, just a beautiful knife. Very sharp. And this, of course, you have to get used to uh, when you're closing it one hand, you have to get used to pushing it in with the quillion. Otherwise, you're going to be uh, engaging a very sharp S35 VN edge. I think this is S35. Let me take a closer look. It doesn't say on here. It doesn't have any billboarding on it whatsoever. So uh, we'll just call it S35, uh, but I'm not sure. Who knows? Maybe it's M390. Let's call it Magna Cut. <laughs> just kidding. It's not Magna Cut. All right. Next up, this is one. This is probably the dagger that gets the most carry uh, without a doubt, actually. This is the Cold Steel Counterattack 2 a small neck knife slash boot knife of a dagger comes with a great boot knife clip, which is not on here right now. Um, I, I like, you know, I, you can see this lanyard wrapped around here. I like using this as a neck knife because it is so light. It's, it's, it's in competition with the very much smaller minimalist, which gets weighted down by the micarta handle. I got to say, this thing is so light. It does have a much bigger footprint, but, you get three fingers of three inches of double-edged uh, bladage here. This is just a wicked little uh, get off me sort of implement. Um, you can see a steep flat grind on either side of that uh, fuller ridged dagger blade. But then when you flip it over, it's convex. It's not just a chisel grind. It is convex here. Let me, let me hold it up to this other camera and see if I do this, if you can see the, the spooned nature of it. Yeah, yeah, you can. You can see how it's sort of hollow ground on that flat side. And I'm not exactly sure what the what the utility of that is, but it's very pleasing and very menacing um, to me. But look at this. This is just three fingers, but with that contoured, grippy Coke bottle shape. Oh, I have no doubt that this would be very effective. And... Um, is not going to slip out of the hand or slip around or anything like that. Uh, just a great little dagger. I, I highly recommend this knife. Uh, if you like daggers, if you like neck knives, if you like small fixed blade knives, this will drop in the pocket beautifully. And it's full tang, which you can see um, through the, yeah, you can see through the lanyard hole there. Uh, so no, no issues whatsoever with this knife, including uh, durability. That is one solid piece of steel under that handle. Great carry sheath also, light and no rattle 
and does not, you know, it breaks free very easily, but will not fall out. Next up, mm, one of the classiest of the daggers, period, and definitely one of one of the most prized in my collection here is the Spartan Harzi dagger. <clears throat> in this beautiful Chattanooga leather works uh, sh uh, sheath Chattanooga leather works is owned by RMJ tactical, you know, the, the Tomahawk makers uh, who also own uh, American Tomahawk company. So that is, that is this knife here though. The, the Spartan Harzi dagger designed by the awesome Bill Harzi jr. Um, all you have to do is have eyes to, to recognize what a beautiful design this is. It's just graceful, elegant. It, it does have a, um, uh, it does have a bit of that classic stiletto, uh, design cue to it. It, it reminds me a little bit of, uh, the, um, the Fairbairn Sykes a little bit, uh, but but there's a lot to it that is just all Bill Harzi. I feel like I could recognize his designs in the dark, uh, though I would not want to have this see this in the dark or or experience this thing. I think that's its primary duty. This is definitely a dispatcher of bad guys. Uh, those are also hollow ground uh, bevels there. Um, again, we see the Coke bottle shape and in the handle and but not round it is oval so it's not going to turn on you however if it does turn on you uh you're probably still in good shape because you can still orient the edge you can tell where the edge is from that jimping and from uh the the feel of the handle comes all the way down into a, a pointed pommel attitude adjuster kind of thing and um man just a beautiful beautiful knife Right, right here, you can see, uh, yeah, you can see that medial ridge keeping it nice and stiff, and you get a nice point there with a lot of meat behind the point. That is a big issue uh, with daggers is the point, and I feel like they've kind of nailed it these days, where they can, where makers can get the the dagger to be thick enough behind the tip that you're not too worried about it. Whereas the Fairbairn Sykes or the um, the classic original Marine Raider stiletto, drop it on the tip, you're in trouble. It's going to break. It's going to snap. It's going to bend. Uh, and then when you bend it back, it will snap. Uh, that's just something I have a lot of experience with. So I, I feel like I can say that with some surety. Um, the cold steel tie pan, the, um, everything we've looked at so far has a nice stout tip to it. And uh, yeah, that, I think that's really important because, again, it's primarily a thrusting weapon. So I can see how having a real thin tip is a benefit because it'll slip in. Uh, but to have uh, a reusable point is also good. Next up is a is a rare, a unique bird here. This is the felony stop from Tops. Now, I know I always talk about how a dagger has to have symmetry to be a dagger. But the symmetry on this is from the from the thumb uh, swale to the tip. It is a dagger blade. It's just that the main cutting edge continues and the handle is a pistol grip. Uh, this is designed by Lacey Zabo, uh, the gentleman who designed the recent release by Tops, the Express. Uh, that is also a double-edged fighting knife, but it's a fighter. If you look at it, the edge, the top edge and the bottom edge are not symmetrical. And so it takes on more of that fighting um, style. Uh, that, that's kind of my, my definition of a fighter versus a dagger. A fighter's top bevel is usually shorter or, you know, yeah, shorter. And the edge is usually not the same exact shape as the primary edge. This one is... Uh, once you get past that thumb swell. So I definitely consider this a dagger. It's just a uniquely shaped dagger and great for, this is a great EDC fixed blade uh, because you've it's small and you've got a curved handle with a rounded pommel. Uh, so when you slip this in the waistband, it does not poke the ribs. It does not poke the love handles. 
it is a uh, a very well uh, con easily concealable easily carried uh, knife and then you hold it in this uh, and you look at it in cross section here you can see the rounded handle uh, kind of in all dimensions so just a great great dagger and a great uh, small you like small fixed blade knives for self defense this is a really good one and tops knives man they they nail it they nail that uh, subgenre of knives of small fixed blade fighting knives that are unique no doubt okay so this one is the only whoa sorry <laughs> this is the only push dagger in my collection um i used to have a couple of the small cold steel push daggers also but i gave those away uh, to people uh friends uh one person uh was very interested in it and she was a petite and otherwise totally uh unexpected uh fan of push daggers so i had to give her one okay so this is the early uh this is the cold steel safe keeper and it is early, an early version of their Kydex or their um, uh, thermo mold plastic sheaths, Securex, I guess they call it. And right before this, every these were all uh, sheathed in leather. This knife in particular, you can see in the movie Platoon, um, uh, carried by, um, oh, what's his name? I don't remember, uh, Eli, not Eli, I can't remember his name, but uh, in a very famous scene, he uh, he slashes it across, I think Eli's uh, cheek and makes it bleed. And I remember seeing that movie thinking, what is that knife? That is amazing, I have to get one. And then, uh, and then shortly thereafter, uh, Cold Steel released it to the wider world. And uh, man, I was all over it. It took me a while, but I was all over it. That's three and a half inches and uh, also a qu uh, quad hollow ground, which this is always the best way to kind of see that. And you do not want to see this thing coming at you. Uh, the, the benefit of a, a push dagger is that it is very hard to disarm. And if you're capable of throwing a punch, that's pretty much all the technique you need with this thing. Uh, you can also slash and do all sorts of other stuff with it. Uh, but just the fact that it protrudes from the fingers and gives you no handle to disarm with is really the strength of the push dagger. Recently, I've been I've been uh, yearning for a custom uh, custom one of these, but I haven't gotten one. I, I'm not used to carrying uh, push daggers. Uh, I, I think I need to make myself used to it because why not? Uh, and you say well, because they're they're usually quite illegal. Well, there is that, but uh, I'm sure I could just carry it around the house. Do love that knife, uh, and it's it's had a place in my collection for quite some time. Uh, next up, I showed this. I'll just be brief. Uh, you have the wonderful sheath here, and then the wonderful dagger here. This is the Spartan. Uh, marine raider dagger these by the way have come and gone in terms of um every time i go to the website uh they're sold out so i i caught it on the third i think the third release so if you're interested in this just keep lurking on the um just keep lurking around the spartan blades website and uh you know, have fast fingers. What can I say? I think now that they've done a couple of runs of them, uh, the the pace, uh, the breathless pace of purchase has slowed a little bit. So I think you have a better chance of getting one of those. Uh, I won't go too into that because I already have. Um, but next up is one that this is the Peacekeeper 2. I used to have a Peacekeeper 2 and then I gave it to a friend who gave me a great pair of sunglasses. It was a it was a nice swap. It was very um very ancient Greek in, in nature. You know, they were all into giving gifts. And uh, I was a guest at his home and he gave me a gift of really cool sunglasses right off his face. I was like, man, I love those American optics. He's like, here you go. I was like, I can't possibly. He's like, you must. And so I accepted them and I had one of these and I gave it to him right back. Here you go. And um, hopefully he still has it. I've lost touch with that friend, but um, 
hopefully he still has it and it's keeping him safe because it is called the peace uh, keeping things peaceful it is the peacekeeper too um and i just found this on ebay not too long ago a very very sharp os 8 blade and and talk about bellied you can see how these peacekeepers this is the smaller of the two there was a larger version of that both of them are out of production now uh, but you can still find them easily on eBay. Uh, but the widening of the blade towards the tip, really adding to the slashing capability of this, even more than the Taipan. The Taipan does have good belly, but that comes more from being broad and uh, and parallel and then tapering at the tip. This actually flares out towards the tip. So in essence, gives you sort of that recurvy um performance without being a recurve, especially when held in sort of a saber grip like this when slashing. Um, great knife. Uh, happy to have it in my collection. Again, you see the Coke bottle uh, shape in both uh, aspects uh, as you you know would expect from a dagger. And that gives you that ability to hold it in sort of a flat bladed shovel grip like this, which a lot of people are, are um, uh, seem to like uh, even uh, let's see, what is it? Uh, one of the case, the case stiletto that's based on uh, a World War II design even has a sort of thumb pad, a jimped thumb pad in the Ricasso there for that grip. I'm um, not exactly sure. I haven't done the research into that style grip. I, I'm wondering if it's uh, easier to slip into an opponent if it's like this to get under any sort of uh, body armor or get in between the ribs. Or, or or what have you. I'm not sure why the shovel grip on a um, dagger. You see it again. We saw it on the sting here. Um, interesting. I got I to gotta look that up, actually, see if I can figure that one out. Okay, last up, arguably the classiest in the whole group, uh, definitely the most classic, is the Randall made fighting stiletto, the uh, combat stiletto. It's the... 2-7. I'm going to bring this over here. This is the model 2 number 7. Um, so number 2 is the model number and 7 refers to the length of the blade. This has a, again, hollow ground, uh, hollow ground bevels, uh, much more shallow hollow grind, but hollow ground bevels and nice belly. Uh, more in the tradition, not, I guess this is this is the tradition because it's the old one, but more like the Taipan in that you have parallels uh, until about here where it tapers, as opposed to the one we were just looking at, the Peacekeeper, where it flares out, and opposed to, say, the Spartan Harzi that just tapers from the Ricasso to the tip. So you get great slashing out of this. Um, I do like how you have, in that sort of classic Randall style, you have a lot of room to put your finger over the quillion. Um, there's something called the Randall fighting technique um, where they, especially with the number one or the swedged Bowie styles, uh, where they have the main edge facing in and uh, you know, kind of hold it like this and attack using the swedge. Uh, nice Coke bottle. This is the... The commando handles a not order this. This was in stock at Knife Center when I bought it, but this is exactly how I would get the number two. So I lucked out on that. Uh, you can choose different handle shapes and pommel styles, and this is called the commando. Uh, and I think it's because uh, it's not wearing any underwear. No, I'm just kidding. I think it's because of the commando shape. It looks like the commando uh, dagger from England, the Fairbairn Sykes, and and um, and then it gives you you get that double quillion, which is so nice and symmetrical. Everything about this is symmetrical and uh, man, it just feels great in the hand. Some people uh, I've had some naysayers uh, kind of bash the knife, this knife and other Randalls, because you can see some some of the machining in the in the blade. And uh, it's not the latest and greatest super steel. This is a 440. C steel, which, you know, uh, I, I, I challenge any of the people who are like, no, that's not a super steel. That's a, you know, for the money I should. Yeah. The, the guys who are using these in combat 
combat in World War II, they were not mincing and pearl clutching about the steel. They were using it to great effect, and they're still around, uh, the, the, the knives are. You can find them at Blade Show in a bunch of different cabinets. You'll see old vintage versions of these. And you know what? They didn't just fall apart because they aren't M390 or, or 3V or whatever. So uh, check yourself when you when you start thinking, oh, Randall's, you know, yes, they are expensive and yes, they take a long time to get, but they are a piece of history and they have been working uh, for over 75 years uh, just great at what they do. If you look at the reinforced tip, you can see a sort of diamond uh, grind at the very tip. Uh, actually reminds me a little bit of the SOG daggers, uh, the Pentagon daggers, where you get a little bit of a pyramid there for strength. And um, yeah, I, I can't say enough about this. A and what I will say is I am a very lucky man to have been able to A, find this, uh, without having to order it and wait five years and be afford it at the time I got this. You don't see me buying Randall made knives right now. Uh, you know, got plenty of other expenses, but at the time I got this, um, it just, uh, all the stars aligned. So I'm very, very lucky to have this, this Randall made two seven. Well, thank you very much for coming on this voyage. If you, if you say journey, you should be able to replace it with voyage. Otherwise it's neither. So thank you for coming on this little trip down memory lane with the daggers. I love daggers. It is one of my favorite uh, historical designs. Um, it is about as simple as it gets. Two edges, uh, same same on both sides, and more, more than likely the whole thing is symmetrical. Great for fighting. All right, be sure to join us on Sunday for Mike Donnelly of Luck Knives. You may know him as NAF Sergeant, just a great guy making beautiful knives. This is another guy who has started making knives and because of his expertise with them and the fact that he's a handy person already, man, his work has just accelerated so quickly, has gotten so good so quickly. So we have a great conversation. Also, be sure to join us tomorrow night for Thursday Night Knives. 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. And if you'd like to become a patron, do so by going to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon or scanning the QR code on your screen. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I thank you, sir. Uh, until next time, please, I implore you, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.